to the kitchen. Today we're going to make my other daughter's favorite cookies. My oldest loves the chewy chocolate gingerbread and my youngest, Callie, loves the pumpkin chocolate chip. Ooh, we should do spring color. How about that with my purple? Yes, the pumpkin chocolate chip actually is a recipe that came from my best friend, Marty. And she makes it one way and I tweaked it another way. And they're both good ways. She does a little icing on hers and I don't think she adds any chocolate. And I tend to add chocolate to everything possible. <laughs> and also you used to have um, peanut butter M&Ms. But anyway, let's get into the recipe. Come with me. Well, it's gonna be hard to make the recipe. I don't have my bowl. <laughs> Not very prepared. I will get one. There, that's better. So, like I said, this is my daughter's favorite recipe. And my best friend Marnie gave it to me. But it has no eggs in it. But it does have flour, so it's not gluten free. And it won't use the whole can, which is fine because I have plans for the other half. It's only going to use half of a can of pumpkin, and the other half I'm going to make pumpkin twists with, which I'll film that too and put it on the on the channel. So, but anyway, back to this recipe. It had peanut butter M and M's in it, but a while ago, peanut butter and I stopped being friends for whatever reason. So now I'm just going to make it strictly with the chocolate chips and I'm going to use dark chocolate because that's my favorite. So let's get started. We'll use one cup of pumpkin. Now if you don't like a soft cookie, if you like a cookie that's really crisp, then you probably won't like these cookies. These are more of a soft cookie and I think they're yummy. And if you don't like chocolate, you could leave the chocolate out and just make it a cookie. Maybe sprinkle some cinnamon sugar on top like a snickerdoodle, but it'd be pumpkin. You could add white chocolate chips, milk chocolate chips, peanut butter chips, butterscotch chips, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But that's why I'm doing dark chocolate because that's my favorite. So there we go. And I would save the rest of that pumpkin for my other recipe. Now to the pumpkin, we're going to add one cup of sugar. And I already have a fourth cup measure in my sugar. So one, two, three, and four. And let's see, it's going to call for a half of a cup of shortening. little so I have Snoopy and more Snoopy and they're fall Snoopies Woodstock also fall another one Snoopy thankful then I have Christmas Christmas and fall I think I need some spring and summer little spatulas I have big spatulas but I tend to like the little ones but yeah I need to work on getting some spring and summer ones because but I love Christmas and fall so much, that's why I have so much of it. And honestly, this is kind of a fall recipe with the pumpkin, but I will bake them in the fall, but I'll bake them any time at all. There, that's your little Dr. Seuss for today. <laughs> now, let's see. We're gonna add the cinnamon and sugar, or cinnamon and salt, and we'll wait on the other two, let's see. A teaspoon of each. So a teaspoon of real salt, sea salt, and now we're going to add a teaspoon of, if I can get a hold of it, cinnamon. Now we're going to mix this up. Okay, now we've got baking powder, baking soda, and flour. And then last will be chocolate chips. So let's start with one cup of flour and I already have a third cup measure in my container there 
one. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of baking powder. Give this a mix. Now, if you are a cookie dough person and you like cookie dough, like to eat cookie dough, but sometimes you get concerned because of the raw egg, this has no egg in it, so enjoy your cookie dough. Enjoy it. You could leave it in the fridge and not even bake it. Just eat it. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done that, but I have nibbled on it because I love cookie dough. So, and I'll even eat the kind with the egg in it. Woo! Living dangerous. Now the recipe makes about two to three dozen cookies. And this is a cookie, when you put it on the cookie sheet, it does not spread a lot. So, it kind of holds its shape somewhat. Now I'm gonna add chocolate. Um, it says a package of chocolate, but this is a big package, so I'm not putting all of that in. So I'm just adding what I wanna add, because it's my cookie. If you were to add M&Ms, whether they're plain peanut or peanut butter, it would probably be one of those third, three fourth pound bags of M&Ms and then a package of chocolate chips. Or you could bypass the chocolate chips and do all M&Ms. It's your cookie. Speaking of chocolate, more. Always more. All right, now we're gonna put the cookies on the tray, the baking sheet. Should be able to get a dozen on each tray. They're gonna bake at 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Halfway through, I always rotate the pan. Let's see if I can do this. Now, like I said, it's a cookie that doesn't spread very much. So you can put it on there. If you want to kind of shape it a little, you can, because it's not gonna spread a lot. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them all out, and then I'll go back and kind of shape them a little bit so that they aren't kind of wonky. up a little bit so they're not quite so spiky looking more nice have a better shape when they bake and they're not a super sticky dough so it's not a big deal to handle them a little bit like this it'll be all right and you can imagine if you had M&Ms in it how colorful they would be so there we go we'll put that first batch in and Work on the next batch. Don't mind the dishwasher going by. I just wanted to show you, they don't spread out a lot. See what I mean? They didn't spread out a lot. And um, these I could have baked a spidge longer. This was my first batch. And then this was the second batch. So the second batch, I did six minutes, then I rotated them and did five minutes. So 11 minutes total. And this was 10 minutes. So they could have used that extra minute. But if you're doing yours and you look in the oven and see them like this, wait until they look more like this. Cause you can see this a little bit more golden in color. I'm a golden on the edge or this one's not quite there yet, but they'll still be good. I'll still eat them. Welcome to tea time friends. Time to eat the pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Sliding around on me. Don't let that thing get lost. And you can smell the cinnamon and pumpkin. This is from my, I made in honor of my daughters, like mother like daughters. So there's me and my two girls, drinking my cacao. Mm. Shall we see how these taste? I think this is the first time I've made them without the peanut butter M&Ms, because like I said, that's usually how I make them. Mm. Have a nice crispy outside, and a soft, chewy inside. The chocolate is just burst of happiness in my mouth. Mmm. Mmm. 
more cakey than cookie. I feel like a cakey type of cookie. But I love them. And you can taste that hint of cinnamon. Like I said, you can change up the chips if you want to. You could even add nuts if you wanted to instead of chips or both. Um, but yeah, the pumpkin's really light, light flavor. It doesn't bowl you over, but you can definitely taste it. Mmm. The inside kind of almost melts in your mouth. Mm. Don't want any chocolate to go to waste. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the baking time and the time we spent together. And I hope you come back and spend some more time with me. Hope you have a wonderful day, friend. Mm. Hi friends, today we're going to make pumpkin twists. I've seen them, a lot of them use um, puff pastry or crescent rolls, but I used my bread dough recipe, which I'll link, there's a video where I made bread, and I'll link that in the description below, so if you want to check that out. Otherwise, you could use frozen bread dough, but right now I'm going to make the filling first. And it's uh, the leftover pumpkin. I made pumpkin cookies yesterday, and there was leftover pumpkin, so that's what's going to go in the middle. So these will be pumpkin twist pastries. Kind of like a um, con twist, or a maple twist, or a cinnamon twist, except I just wanted to use pumpkin instead. So we have the leftover pumpkin. Then it's going to call for some brown sugar and we need some pumpkin pie spice and I'm also going to throw in some cinnamon because, because I want to. And I know there's already cinnamon in pumpkin pie spice but I don't care. It's my, my recipe, I'll do what I want. Do you your recipe, do what you want. Leave it in. Leave it out. You do you. So we got the brown sugar. We're gonna put pumpkin pie spice. And you can buy pumpkin spice, but I make my own. Just because I almost always have all the ingredients. And that way I get more for less. And then we'll do the, just a smidge of cinnamon. So there we go. This would be a great fall recipe, but which I'll be happy to make it again this fall, but I just feel like doing it today. I've been feeling in a pastry mood. Actually, I've been kind of craving donuts, but we haven't been any place where I can buy some, and I could make them, but I don't want a dozen donuts, which is funny because I probably will have a dozen pumpkin twists, but I think that also is that when I make donuts at home, they're usually cake donuts, and I'm not a big fan of cake donuts. So I made my dough in the bread machine, so I have my bread dough, and now I'm gonna roll it out and make my pumpkin twists. What I'm actually gonna do is cut it in half, and you'll understand why. Start with one half. Get some flour on it because it's kind of kind of sticky. Start rolling. And as always with all of my recipes, the ingredient list will be in the description. The instructions are because I'm hoping you watch the video. So now we have that and I'm going to spread this on there. If you didn't want pumpkin you could do it with cinnamon. Cinnamon, um, I would do cinnamon, brown sugar, and butter. Probably a half a stick of butter melted and then maybe a 
half a cup to a cup of brown sugar, um, probably a tablespoon of cinnamon. So you could do it that way if you're not a pumpkin fan or you don't have any pumpkin but you still would like to have a twist. You roll out another one to put on top. But I used up all of my space. I'm going to shimmy down here. I don't need this anymore. Let's move you guys. You think you need outside? Oh no. Well, I'm not opening the window. Too bad. I'm busy. What we want to do is we want to try and roll it out so that it matches the size of that one. Could get a tape measure, which I just might just to make sure. Okay, we can do some adjusting. It's forgiving. There we go. Now it's still going to be a little bit messy. As you can see, it's leaking out. Good stuff. No. So I have my pan of parchment. So I'm going to use a pizza cutter and cut these. I'm trying to decide how many. Probably a dozen. All right, so now I'm going to use a hand one. What you want to do is twist it. Some of it's going to leak out, and that's fine. It'll be all right. It's funny, my one hand twist, twists really well, but the other one not so well. <laughs> and you would think it would be my right hand that would do a good job, because I'm right-handed, but it's the left hand that's doing the good job. Oh, well. And there we go. So now I'm going to brush them with some egg wash. Let me wash my hands. Okay, so here's my egg beaten with a little bit of water. Now we're gonna brush it on. And it may seem a little bit sloppy, but once they bake, it all is forgiven. Now we're going to take pure cane raw sugar. And then what I'm going to do is set this on the stove and let it rise for about 30 minutes. Then we will bake it. That's the oven preheating to 350. Granted, it's already preheated even though this is going to sit on the oven, but that residual heat from it being on ready will help this rise. And there they are. Don't they look beautiful? They baked at 350 for about a half hour. Um, after 15 minutes, I rotated the pan 180 degrees. And, oh, too bad you don't have smell o vision um, uh, They rose for about 40 minutes before I actually put them in the oven. And I'm going to let them cool off a bit. And then I'll show you how to make the glaze so we can glaze them for tea time. Oops, they look amazing. They smell amazing. So now we're going to make a glaze. It's a powdered sugar glaze. 
actually There we go, that's forgetting two of the components. So it's a powdered sugar glaze, and I thought since it's not gonna make a lot, I'm gonna put it in here and that way I can just pour it over. So we're gonna start with one cup of powdered sugar. And this is a third cup measure. I had to double check. Don't wanna be putting in too much or too little. I'd rather do too little because I can always add more, but it's hard to take it out. I'm going to be using my coconut milk. You can use any kind of milk you wish. If you want to use straight up regular milk, go ahead. Almond milk, coconut milk. Um, I don't know what else is there. Goat's milk calls for a tea. Oh, maple extract. I was going to use maple syrup. P.S. We have a friend that's from Maine who gave us a little education quickly on maple syrup. Almost all the maple syrup store, sold in stores is A grade, which if you don't like a lot of maple-y, molassa, molasses kind of rich flavor, stick with the A grade. But if you would like something that's a little more rich in the molasses flavor, a little more earthy, look for B grade. This is actually made in the Appalachian Mountains here in North Carolina. And it's BC grade, so, and you can tell a difference, and it's amazing if you're a maple molasses lover. I highly recommend it. Tip for the day. Now we have maple extract. So we want maple extract. Use maple syrup, but I don't think it would have quite been the way we wanted. And just to kick up the pumpkin, I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. We're going to whisk this together. We might need to get some more milk because it seems to me like that's a lot of powdered sugar for one tablespoon of milk, but we'll see. I still might add a little bit more milk. Just to thin it out a smidge. If you want your thicker, you can make your thicker. If you want thinner, do it thinner, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a little bit more milk. Now we're gonna drizzle. left-handed. We'll drizzle this on our twists. You should smell it. Wow. Smells amazing. This would definitely be a great fall winter type of treat just because all the scents I'm getting here that are raging in my head are definitely fall between the maple and the cinnamon and the pumpkin. Wow. Although I'm not going to have any hard trouble eating it anyway, even though it's not fall when I made this video. It's actually spring. But that's okay. Like I said, I will still find a way to eat it. It'll still be fine. Get some drips there. And there you go. I'll be seeing you at tea time. Yes. Welcome to tea time. Time to try our twists. Have a drink first, I'm ready. I would pick it up like a true pastry, but I'm afraid it's gonna fall apart, so fork it is. Mmm. Finger looking good. Mmm. Mmm. You taste the pumpkin and the cinnamon. Um, surprisingly, it's not super, super sweet. 
It grows great with coffee, or in my case, I'm drinking the cacao. Um, Creo, C-R-I-O, Creo Brew. If you're someone like me that can't handle coffee because of the caffeine and the components in coffee, it's made with cacao beans, and this is not a promotion or endorsement. They don't even know I'm talking about it. I just love it so much. It's what I drink every day instead of coffee because it doesn't bother my digestion. And it smells like chocolate, but it tastes like coffee, kind of. Like a co uh, chocolate coffee where you've got those undertones of chocolate, but it's not sweet. Unless you want to add sugar, but I drink mine black. So, but anyway. Mm. So it makes a dozen. This would be a great little breakfast. You could, what you could do is have them all made up, but not baked. Cover it with some saran wrap or a lid or whatever. Put it in your refrigerator and bake it in the morning. So if you're gonna have company, then you can bake it fresh. It's delicious. Mm. So I make a hard decision during tea time now because I also have pumpkin cookies. So do I want pumpkin cookies or do I want a pumpkin twist? Decisions, decisions. Mmm. Oh, so good. You know what you also could do instead of pumpkin? just now occurred to me is use your favorite jam or jelly and just spread that on there really thin so you could make a cherry or raspberry or grape um, whatever flavor you like I can use my lingonberry but thanks for joining me today friends thanks for coming to visit me and happy pumpkin